Hello, Brett Nelson back. Another tutorial in FlexSim. This is a kind of a starter tutorial just talking about supplying material into your model and the different places that you can send material to and just making basic connections. Every model has to have some material to work on. And uh, so for our models, we'll always need a source. This is the first in the list of fixed resources. The source then is responsible for delivering material into the system. And we can set what material that we want to bring in. So there's the default is a box. We can also choose some other very basic shapes like a cylinder sphere. Um, then these, the plane and circle don't make much sense. They're not three dimensional. A palette um, could be useful at some point if we're doing sort of a palleting or packaging operation. Um, or a tote. Similarly, if we're putting things into totes, we need to create totes for the system. For my purposes here, I'm just going to stick to the basic box. So the default is uh, to have material come at a regular time interval. You can also have it set up as a schedule or a sequence. So let's just talk about inter arrival for a moment. Um, you can check this if you want material to start delivering right away. So as soon as you hit run on the model that's time zero and material would be delivered and then the default is an exponential function um, with a, essentially a target time of 10. Uh, i've set my default um, time to minutes you can change this to um, sorry if i do the pull down here you can change this to seconds or hours or days whatever um, i'm going to leave mine at minutes here and Okay, so uh, mine will default to a target arrival, typically every 10 minutes with a decreasing probability of, of arriving earlier than that. So I don't want to spend a lot of time waiting for this um, in this demonstration, so I'm going to set it to arrive every minute. So that's our source. Now, where can material go? A very common place for material is to head to a queue. Thank you. Um, and a queue is like an inventory point. It's a collection point for material. So it just comes, parks in the queue. This can represent uh, just a uh, space on the shop floor, a bench, a table, anything like that. This is sort of this generic holding spot for material. And I will say that you're going to need a queue if you have a processor. So if you've got some thing, uh, representing an oper something that will operate on material uh, like a drill press or a milling machine or a welding station something like that unless it's um, so in a traditional sense if you have an operator at the machine they will uh, take material from the queue load it on the machine do the work and then pass the material on so you can't have material just coming straight into the processor there has to be this holding spot where the operator can then retrieve material. So this is this is where you you have to absolutely have to have a queue in front of anything like a processor. Alternatively, you could have a conveyor. So the material goes from the source onto a conveyor belt, and and so instead of waiting in the queue, it just gets transported straight into the next part of the process. So you have a, a continuous line operation, like a continuous assembly, or a, Pass through furnace or um, an automated painting line, then then a conveyor belt might be more appropriate. But you can't go from a conveyor belt to a processor, for example. I'll also say for the conveyor, just to point out, if you uh, click and hold on the conveyor option here, we can also select a curved conveyor. Okay, and if you if you look and see, there's this um, uh, sort of move at the end. So that allows you to actually reshape the conveyor. For now, I'm just going to get rid of that. I just need a single conveyor to prove a point here. Another uh, couple of places that you could send material is down in here listed under warehousing. Um, so floor storage, for example, is um, it's a bit like a queue, but you have a little more control if you need it um, over where the material sits. So a queue, 
basically has a stacking system that that you can set up. It's not too complicated where floor storage actually has um, sort of this control over X, Y, Z. How does it get filled uh, in, in sort of what order? And, and you can actually address each of the different spots on the space um, using this addressing scheme, which is a little more sophisticated than we need at this point. Okay, and then similarly to this uh, floor storage is a rack. And you might find a rack is useful if you're trying to um, map out some kind of a warehousing system or a storage system or distribution system or a, a, a pick system, then it's likely that you want a rack to simulate that. We need to make connections. Let's just um, get these each connected so you can see how they work. I'm going to uh, use the connect objects A key as a shortcut here. So um, I'm holding down the A key and I'm connecting the source to the queue. I'm going to come back and do it again, source to the conveyor, come back and do it again, source to storage and source to the rack. Um, and just so we see how this works, I'm going to connect the queue to the processor. Okay. So right now the source is just delivering, although it's connected to all of these, it's only delivering to the first connection that I've made. So if I click on, uh, just highlight this down here. If I click on ports down here, the default is to show you the input ports and there's no connections. But if I come down and choose the output ports from this little pull down menu, now I can see there's four connections, the queue, this transfer conveyor, floor storage, and the rack. Um, and you can see send to port. Come on. The send to port logic is just set up as first available. Uh, so I can change that. A simple way, if you want to sort of have it just sequence through each one, we, we can do all kinds of different things. We can add in mathematical instructions and, and, and have different, um, if a condition is true, then do such and such or according to different cases. I'll get into that in a future tutorial too. But let me just start with round robin. So round robin is just sort of feeding each one of these in turn. So there we go. So parts went to the queue, passed on to the processor. Uh, parts went on the conveyor, <laughs> fell off the end. <laughs> well, actually, they're sort of hanging on here, right? Um, but there's, because there's nothing, I haven't defined it to go anywhere. So they're just stacking up here. Uh, the floor storage by default is just filling from the first available spot. And similarly, the rack is just filling up from the first available spot. It's because my conveyor belt is, that's my guess, is my conveyor belt is full, so it can't accept any more inputs. So the source, if I looked at the statistics here, just to help with the troubleshooting, this source is uh, in a state of blocked. But that gets us started, okay? Those are essentially the, the, how you need to start your model. You'll need at least one source to introduce material into the model, and these are the four different locations that it can go. Hopefully you found that useful. I'm going to end the tutorial there, and, um, and I'll do another one to talk about sort of next in line or where we can feed from here. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks for watching.